presentation. My name is Mario Guerra and I come from the University of Burgos in Spain. And I belong to a research group that we are working on, on 3D reconstruction of heritage. And I'm focused on optimization methodologies in, in this area, optimization methodologies in the virtual reconstruction. So we are, we are talking about a project that is in La Peña del Castro in the north of Spain. That is a small archaeological project and that is over here in the north of Spain, just in the border of the first Roman invasion. And it's between the Asturias and Cantabri people, and they are called Barinensi. So this is a Celtic settlement of the Iron Age, and it's over a hill. And that's a quite small settlement in comparison of other settlements in, in the north of Spain. But it's quite important for its characteristics. So we decided to collaborate with them and to make some great models and a virtual application. So uh, it's an open project, open archaeology project. They, they, are, they are researching about the possibilities of communication applied to, to this kind of settlements. So it was a good opportunity for us to make a virtual reality tour. First of all, we had some illustrations, some archaeological data that we could use to make the, to make the first models. And our first collaboration with was that, to make some 3D models, a virtual reconstruction. Well, yes, we need, need information and time, and just we had some renders and some videos. But we wanted to go further. We wanted to make a, a, virtual, a virtual tour because because we thought that only renders, only videos was not enough information for people to, to understand and to learn, to learn about the settlement and about the RNAs. So our main objective in this project is to improve the learning capabilities of 3D reconstruction using virtual reality. It's a good aim, it's a good objective, but we had some problems in the starting point of the project. First of all, that is very important for us, is the lack of funds. Well, there, were a very, there was a very limited development time because there are no funds, there are no money in this project. So we have to optimize all the methodologies. Well, I'm focused on optimization, so in this kind of projects without funding, it's, it's good for me because I, I prefer projects <laughs> without money because it's easier to make optimization in these ones. This, this settlement is fair way of anything. The, the closest uh, village is over, over one hour by walking, so it's, it's very far away. There is no infrastructure, neither electricity, what, that's a problem for virtual reality. There is no touring stuff. I, I said that there is no money, so there's no people. And it's not well known in the region. So these are the the interactive tools that we use in, in other projects, high-end virtual reality, portable virtual reality, and video games. And in this project, we have this lack of funds, so that implies that we can use high-end virtual reality, that we are specialized, specialized on that. It's very difficult to make a video game with the funds because, because it needs a lot of development time. So, we decided to make a portable virtual reality because of the funds. We didn't need too much time. And it's a remote place, so that's essential to make a video game. Oh, that's essential. That's very difficult to make a video game in a remote place. It's impossible to make a high-end virtual reality. We have no electricity or, or infrastructure. So portable reality, portable reality or portable virtual reality was an option, was just the, the one option, the only option. And the tourism staff was, was important, was important from video games. It's very important for high-end virtual reality, but maybe without the, we'd make a, a virtual tour without people, without tourist staff, if it's portable. So, this is the most important point for us because it's the one where we can, we can research because I'm working on optimization. If we have no foundation, we have no time, so we have to, to make the project with the less resource possible. 
So we develop an, a methodology to optimize time, to save time, and to save money in this, in this project, mixing panoramic views, panor panoramic peaks with rendering of the, of the models. So we have archaeological data that could be used to make the models to save time. We have uh, 3D models that were done before the project, and just we need to make the, the panoramic photos, the rendering, and after a process of compositing. So, archaeological data is essential to make a, a reliable 3D model because all these data wells were used to make models in, in the last time possible. And we had a photo photogrammetric model of the, of the settlement that could be used to make as a reference to the fair-term model. So, to save time, we could use our last models, and we just need five rendering points in this tour. That's very useful for us because there are no time, there are no fundings to make that, and I'll, we are using portable virtual reality, so we just need some renders. It's very easy compared to hacking virtual reality. We have some models, the walls of the settlement, some kind of, of constructions, and some houses. So all these models were used to make the virtual portable virtual reality. And we decided to, to mix them with panoramic views. And so we thought that it would improve the visual realism and we will save, it would save uh, a lot of time in the rendering in the rendering process. So we make five panoramic views that were mixed with the five renders. So this is the virtual tour with as I told you just five points. And these five points were mixed between the render and the and the panoramic photos. Render project what rendering process was was easy because there are only five points, and there were an uh, important point that was the lighting, because it has to be the same that the panoramic views. Well, next step was the the mixing the mixing phase, the compositing, where we mix the photos with the three D models. And this is the most important point for us, the color correction, because it, it's what differences the, what, pro, what provides the most, the most realism. And after a refi refining process. So here we have the panoramic take. As you can see, ground is very near, and the, and the top of the hill is far away. We have one render of the settlement. As I told you, we could use our last models, like the wall. Maybe you see the wall very small here, but in the virtual reality, it's quite huge. It's, 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 and this is the, the first mix. As you can see, it's not very good. There are some archaeological elements here. The color doesn't work very well. So next step is the color correction and the refining. With color correction, we can adjust the color of the render and the panoramic view, and with post-production, with, post with compositing, we can, we can delay all, all the elements that we don't need. So here are the five points. Out the wall, in the gate, inside the settlement between the houses. So here you can see in, 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 each, in each render, we have more information of the, of the panoramic view or the model. Here, the model is just this area. Here, it's just the ground and this area. 
out the gate. Here, just this and this and <coughs> on the ground. And we have other other two renders inside the house that they just just was was 3D modeling a 3D model with a panoramic view. So the virtual tour. This is the tour as I told you, and we developed in 2016. We have been two years of of visit. We have been we have <laughs> visitors from two years, and we could solve all our problems. The lack of funding, well, was was only two weeks of work. Well, that's not too much for a project like this, and. We just need a mobile device and a, and a virtual set, a virtual portable set that is very cheap. It's very, very cheap. So it could be afforded by the council. <coughs> it's far away of anything, of anything. Well, the batteries allows more than five hours of, of working. That's pretty good for, for the ecologist, for the ecologist that work on the settlement. No infrastructure were needed. Neither electricity. Well, this is portable. We don't need we don't need anything to to carry on the the set there. There is no turn staff needed because archaeologists that work on the excavations and volunteers could do the task. Could could get people there and and provide the the virtual set and archaeological set site not well known. Well, virtual reality by itself could attract people to the to the to the virtual tour and to the um, to the excavation just this virtual tour that is a portable tour is not a, a very very complex project could attract some people and and there were a lot of people of the region and and villages near of the of the excavation that came just to test just to try the virtual reality, so that was very important, and it was in the main page of the most important newspaper of the region, so it was not well known that because of the virtual reality it could attract some people, some visitors. So, conclusions. Uh, we, we think that mixing 3D render and, and panoramic photos Saves the development time in certain cases. Maybe not in all the cases, but if you if you can save time, just you can save a lot of time. Just don't worry about the ground or not worrying about the landscapes or the or the mountains. There's a lot of models that that don't need to be done. And we think that that improves the quality, the quality and the realness of the renders of the views because we can mix both of them. We can mix the panoramic views and the 3D models and it's pretty good for the time that we need in, the, in this realization. Obviously, it could be better, but in the lack of funds project, well, it's a good option. Portable virtual reality is a good experience to, for remote archaeological sites. Maybe I, I, say, I said it's not the best one, it's rather a high res project, but in this case where it, the, the archaeological site is far away from anything, well, it's an option and it's a quite, quite well option, quite good option. And it's low cost, but it's important when there is no budget or there is no money. Portable virtual reality improves the visitor's experience and its learning capabilities. Well, we are studying this, but we think we, we are sure, pretty sure, that increase the capabilities of the people to understand something because they are, they are seeing something, something better than just a render or just a draw. <coughs> and that's all. Thanks for your attention.